Bonjour, good morning. We have people joining us uh, by WebEx, and I'm going to be asking the operator to queue all of the participants who are with us here today on WebEx. Bonjour, messieurs, dames. Mon nom est Daniel Normando. My name is Dan Normando, and I have the privilege of being your facilitator over the next two days for this conference. Very happy to be here, and uh, we welcome people from right across the country who've come to join in this critically important conference to develop a federal framework on Lyme disease. Before we start, um, for those of you who were with us last night and heard the stories that people shared with us of courage, determination, and wisdom before we start this day and get going on our conference, which I will describe momentarily, please join me in uh, giving them a real loud hand of applause for their major contribution last night. As you know, there are uh, independent filmmakers in this room. One, there's uh, our video feed that's going to the uh, overflow room. But there's another uh, uh, independent filmmaker who's uh, putting together a documentary. If someone should not wish to have their image recorded, please advise the cameraman directly, and he will ensure your image is not captured. Ladies and gentlemen, today and tomorrow is a unique opportunity for all of us. It's time to work together, to bring together our expertise, our experience, our journey, our stories. And I would encourage all of us to approach our work over the next couple of days with respect, to listen deeply to each other for understanding, and as I mentioned last night, to be hard on the issues and soft on the people, and to approach our work with a positive uh, approach. This is an opportunity to build a framework that will improve what it is we're all experiencing today. The agenda and program that we will be following over the next couple of days is really in three parts. The first one is, last night we appreciated people's journey, their experience, and uh, of course that will be recorded and will be accessible online uh, in the next few weeks as soon as we, we can get the technical issues addressed, but they will be available to all of you. Today is really about putting the body of evidence on the table and hearing from the experts uh, on their view. The overview of Lyme disease, of course, which we will hear this morning and this afternoon in the smaller breakout sessions, we'll be focusing on individual themes um, that include surveillance and the other two themes that you find on your agenda. What we'll be doing this afternoon is giving you an opportunity to really dig deeper in terms of the thematic issues so that you can have the opportunity of really uh, engaging with those experts and really finding out what the body of experience and expertise really has to offer at this point so that we can actually be informed for our work tomorrow morning. And our work tomorrow morning is really uh, with a view to harnessing all of the experience and expertise that you're having to provide in this room so that we can hear your ideas on what you think should go into a federal framework all the various elements, uh, the issues that you think need to be addressed. We'll be in inviting you tomorrow morning to really share all those. And then tomorrow afternoon, as we uh, conclude the conference, it will be, be to bring all that body of knowledge and experience and contribution on your part to inform the development of the framework. And it's going to be an extremely um, insightful conference. We have all of the experience in the room, all of the, uh, of the expertise that's required. And to launch the, this conference, it is my deep pleasure to introduce the Honorable Jane Philpott. That's going to be a double applause. Dr. Jane Philpott is a family physician, for those of you who don't know, and was the chief of the Department of Family Medicine at Markham Stouffville Hospital. She was also an assistant professor at the University of Toronto in the Department of Family and Community Medicine. And of note, between 1989 and 1998, Jane worked in the West African country of Niger, where she practiced general medicine and helped to develop a training program for village health workers. In 2004, she founded Give a Day to World AIDS, which has raised over $4 million to help those affected by AIDS in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Jane Philpott.
Thank you very much for the kind introduction and for the wonderful opportunity to be here at this conference. This is a fantastic event. I'm thrilled to see the response and hello also, I don't know where the camera is actually, but to, to the folks who are, are watching from, I guess there's an overflow room and some 400 other people that are signed up uh, to follow the conference online, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is an extremely important step, uh, this event that is taking, today, taking place over the the next couple of days to build a federal framework on Lyme disease. And I want to acknowledge the conference planning committee who have done so much hard work over uh, such a long period of time to put together uh, the event that we are all enjoying today. And I cannot help but thank my fellow parliamentarian, Elizabeth May, who, as you all know, is such a hero on this matter uh, for her incredible hard work and leadership on the matter of Lyme disease in Canada, and particularly her excellent work in introducing the Private Members Bill, which has uh, led us to hear today the Private Members Bill that asked for uh, respecting a federal framework on Lyme disease. So a big thank you to you, Elizabeth. This is what all conferences should be like. When we get together and we have th the voices of everyone that is affected, I think it's fantastic that we've brought together scientists, that we've brought together patients and policymakers and all of those who need to have a voice as we go forward. This is an opportunity to bring those voices together, to hear from Canadians across the country, and I suspect we're hearing from international partners as well. It's so important that we have discussions like this to develop a federal framework so that we are guided by the needs and concerns of those who are most affected by Lyme disease. I'm delighted to hear reports about last evening. I gather you had a fantastic public forum. I hear that the stories were heart-wrenching and profound, and I'm so um, pleased that uh, so many of you had the opportunity to share those stories. Many of my colleagues I know were here and were deeply moved by the stories that they heard. And over the next few days, this will remain a public uh, open event, and I certainly encourage you to share this, the ideas that you're learning about here with your colleagues and friends across the country. We all know that Lyme disease is a serious illness. There is no doubt that it is spreading across Canada. There is no doubt about the challenges that we face. Initial symptoms can differ from person to person, which makes it difficult to diagnose. And early identification, as many of you well know, is critical to successful treatment and prevention of serious health issues that are associated with the illness. That's exactly why it's so important that we bring together researchers, medical experts, patients, and concerned Canadians. All of us here today know that there are challenges as we face Lyme disease in this country. There is no doubt that we need much more research to better guide diagnoses. We need better surveillance and we need more education and awareness to inform both the public and practitioners about this infectious disease. This is, not surprisingly, exactly why we need a federal framework on Lyme disease. As you will recall, the framework is going to focus on three key areas. Number one, establishing a national medical surveillance program to properly track the incidence rates as well as the economic costs of Lyme disease. Number two, the need to establish guidelines, guidelines for prevention, identification, treatment and management, and sharing best practices across the country. And number three, the creation of standardized educational materials that will increase awareness about the disease. Je suis certaine que cette conférence provoquera une excellente collaboration de toutes les personnes ici présentes et qu'elle permettra de poursuivre quelques-uns des excellents travaux effectués. Comme vous le savez peut-être, au cours des trois dernières années, l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada a mis en œuvre son plan d'action sur la maladie de Lyme. Nous nous sommes associés aux provinces et aux territoires pour fournir aux Canadiennes et Canadiens les renseignements dont ils ont besoin pour se protéger. Nous effectuons également le suivi des endroits où émerge la maladie et des segments de la population qui sont les plus à risque. We're also working closely with Canadian Institutes for Health Research to explore new science and research to be able to better detect, diagnose and treat Lyme disease. 
In the last four years, the Canadian Institutes for Health Research has invested more than $2.8 million toward Lyme disease projects, and I hope that there will be much more research to come. We are telling health professionals to be vigilant in diagnosing Lyme disease and reporting cases back to the local public health authorities. All of this work we know can continue to be improved upon and we need to enhance it together. Over the next two days, you will be taking part in this very important opportunity to discuss the latest science on Lyme disease, to develop suggestions for consideration in the federal framework for Lyme disease. As you know, the framework cannot be written overnight, but this conference is an essential and important step in getting there. All of the information, feedback, ideas, and opinions that are generated at this conference will be fully considered as the federal framework for Lyme disease is developed. Ultimately, the outcomes of this conference are going to help protect the health and well-being of all Canadians, and that is something that we all need to be proud of. So I thank you once again for the effort that it's taken for you to join us today. I wish you a wonderful conference, and I look forward to hearing all about it. Many thanks. Please join me in welcoming Elizabeth May, Member of Parliament. Green Party of Canada. You need no introduction. Oh. <laughs> I'm just setting my clock because I have time limits. First, let me start by acknowledging that we're on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin of Golden Lake, Megwich, and as uh, coming from Saanich Peninsula, uh, Saanich people would say Heishka, with respect and honor to be here. And it's deeply overwhelming to be with so many of you who are the champions and heroes of the fight on Lyme disease. Many people have asked me over the last number of years since I took up the idea of finding a way as an individual member of parliament to make a difference to help the people I knew who had Lyme disease. How I got started, how I got interested in this as an area that needed attention. And so I want to start by saying it was Brenda Sterling in Pictou County when I was a neighbor who said uh, that she had Lyme disease. I, I, you know, you don't really like asking someone in a wheelchair who seems to be permanently disabled why they're permanently disabled. And I, had, I asked her. And then she told me I have Lyme disease. And I, I really didn't believe it. I mean, I was stunned. I didn't know that people could end up in wheelchairs, Nicole, I didn't know then that people could end up in wheelchairs with Lyme disease. And Brenda told me about her struggle and about, and the stories that you all know, we heard dozens of them last night of being told, no, you can't have Lyme disease. We don't have Lyme disease in Nova Scotia. And then we've heard last night how many patients were told, we don't have Lyme disease in Manitoba. No, we don't have Lyme disease in Alberta. No, you're wrong. You can't have Lyme disease. We don't have Lyme disease in British Columbia. So it was the stunning similarities in the stories that made me think, this is not just a random bunch of coincidences that I keep meeting people who have the same experience. Something's going on here, and it requires a public policy response. And if I can do something about it, I will. So I want to start again by thanking deeply all of the parliamentarians who did this. This is the ultimate nonpartisan issue. I want to thank the interim Conservative Party leader, Rana Ambrose, our former Minister of Health. If she hadn't decided to let people support my bill in her party, it certainly would never have passed, certainly wouldn't have passed unanimously. So I'm very grateful to Rana. I'm hugely grateful to our new Minister of Health, Jane Philpott, herself a medical doctor. And I think, you know, you're now Canada's doctor. And I think you've got great bedside manner. I, I, I feel good about you as our minister, Jane. I got really grateful. So I also want to thank members of parliament who aren't in this 42nd parliament, but who helped a lot. Conservative Terence Young, uh, NDP Libby Davies, and currently in cabinet also, our current minister for science was a huge help in helping me with this bill, the Honorable Kirsty Duncan, who's now minister for science. It is a nonpartisan issue, but we have together, and I think we do have the right spirit starting out today for a two-day conference, knowing that the conference is not the goal of the bill. The goal of the bill is the federal strategy, which I had in the first draft of the bill called for a national strategy, a framework 
for Lyme disease with a focus on the patients. That's what came out last night in the discussions. I remember Debbie McCann calling in from New Brunswick and saying, we've got to stop treating this as a debate about one opinion versus another opinion, and in the middle are the patients. This has to be about the patients. And I think if we can keep our focus there, know that people have gone through hell and back for no good reason without getting answers. But for the next two days, park the anger, try as hard as you can to listen and figure out how do we work together from here on forward to ensure that the Federal Department of Health, the Public Health Agency for Canada, can get the cooperation from the provincial departments of health. Right across this country, we need medical doctors to work with their patients, to work with the research agencies, to work with the departments of health and the official accrediting bodies for doctors. Because I have some very specific goals we must not lose track of. We must put an end to the status quo where Canadians who are sick are forced to go to the U.S., lose their homes, lose their savings, lose their pensions. This has to end. Our Canadian health care system has to take care of everyone. And no one with Lyme disease should be stigmatized anymore. With that, je veux seulement ajouter Pour tout le monde qui a, qui a maintenant, c'est les patients avec la maladie de Lyme. Nous sommes ensemble, en solidarité, tout le monde ensemble pour euh, les grands, euh, pour que, pour le grand défi de la maladie de Lyme. We can confront this huge challenge with knowledge. And this conference is not the end. I want you all to know that I will never stop working on this. I have faith in this process that it will remain inclusive and transparent. And you have my word, I won't let go of that. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Madame May. We'd now like to hear from Mr. Jim Wilson, the president of the Canadian Lyme Disease Foundation. Jim, the floor is yours. Welcome everybody and thank you for coming, both those in person and everybody who's out there online. I wish to thank Minister Philpott for taking the time to come this morning. I know you have a very busy schedule. A special thank you to Elizabeth May and all those who helped bring Bill 442 into law, including Brenda Sterling from Nova Scotia, Nicole Bottles and her mom Chris Powell, David Coverley from British Columbia, uh, David is a previous uh, opposition party health critic in the province of BC and now a director on the board of the Canadian Lyme Disease Foundation. And to all of those others who contributed, patients have been waiting 27 years to be given a voice since the formation of the first Lyme Borreliosis Society in Canada, the Lyme Borreliosis Society of British Columbia, formed by Diane Kindry in 1989 followed a year later by the Lyme Disease Association of Ontario, formed by John and Kit Scott. Thank you to all those members of Parliament and the Senate who unanimously enabled this bill to be brought into law. This conference can be seen as only the starting point from where we must move on. But this time, the patients and their experts must be seen as equal partners. In all aspects, including guideline writing, diagnostics, treatment, prevention, surveillance, and what research our tax dollars should be funding, we need to truly identify the burden of Lyme borreliosis currently within our chronically ill population and to find better ways to identify future victims of the disease. Patients in our country cannot afford to throw away another 27 years. Canada is better than that. Currently, only select people through secretariats um, are, are privy to the flow of information that goes to our deputy ministers where at, at the provincial levels, where at the actual um, health care delivery model is set. There is no mechanism in place currently 
uh, for the victim and their experts to evaluate the quality and the accuracy of the information flowing through these taxpayer-funded secretariats. And that needs to change. Here we are in 2016, and Canada has no idea how many Canadians now or over the previous decades contracted Lyme disease because the protocols in place for testing and clinical diagnostics have had big gaping holes and still do. The conference has to has so much potential to grow ethical, transparent science and discussion, but it will require not only the support of government, but government must put in place a mechanism of oversight to see that the patients and their experts are seen as equal partners at the table. We must have a say in how healthcare on all matters Lyme Borreliosis are delivered. So that means we are there on every panel, not with token membership but as equal partners. There can no longer be a community panel and then an expert panel where the expert panel has all the say in the end. And it's that expert panel who gets to decide who gets diagnosed and who gets treated. And the, the community has no say in that end result and that has to change. That approach fails everyone as it breeds bias and self-serving policy. Currently, government communications and marketing staff have more input than the ultimate end user, the victims of Lyme Borreliosis policy. There is something terribly wrong and yet very telling with that. Canada has to stop endorsing American policy and guidelines uh, and imposing them upon Canada. We have a very uh, we have very different medical systems and our structure as it is now makes it too easy to introduce bad policy overnight coast to coast in our social system. By, and, and, and it creates a one focus, single direction, tunnel vision medical bureaucracy. We have, as a, we have at least as much strain variation in Canada as anywhere in the world. Plus, we are a large country spanning coast to coast to coast. We can no longer define Lyme Borreliosis by ser serology. And Dan Gregson, who you'll be hearing from next, last evening mentioned his background with AIDS and HIV. There, nothing changed until heterosexuals began getting sick. Then things started to happen. With Lyme disease, it required politicians, families, physicians, and scientists getting sick. We are sadly finally here. We can do it in Canada, for Canada, and this conference is the first step. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to hear now from the medical community, Don, Dr. Daniel Gregson, who's the past president of the Association of Medical Microbiology and Infectious Disease Canada. Dan? Uh, thank you. I want to start by thanking everybody who got up and spoke last night. Uh, unfortunately, we were in three rooms and I can only hear about 27 people. I did hear uh, all of your suffering, both the physical suffering, the psychological suffering, and the financial suffering that you, you, some of you or all of you have experienced over the last uh, decade or so. And it, it truly is, I'm truly I'm moved by that suffering. I can tell you that, that's for sure. And my members are moved by that suffering. Um, with regards to my um, prior experience with HIV, the vast majority of my patients were gay. Um, I treated them long before there was any federal framework on, on, on HIV. I care for my gay, gay patients, I care for all my patients. And I'm a little bit um, upset about the insinuation that I don't care for gay people, I do. I have gay friends, I know transgender people, that is not who I am. In any case, I'm here now on behalf of the Association of uh, Medical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases Canada to welcome you all, the patients, the delegates, and the uh, experts to this meeting to assist the Public Health Agency of Canada to develop a federal framework for Lyme disease in Canada. So our association is a, is a non-profit association. Uh, we've received no government funding. We've received no, no, received no um, industry funding other than support for our annual meeting. 
and we receive no funding from external uh, companies or governments, so we're not funded by the IDSA. We receive no funding from European agencies and things like that. We're really a group of specialists, over 500 of us, who really are specialists, who did all of our training in infectious diseases and medical microbiology and other scientists who were involved with uh, research and treatment uh, and caring for patients who have been affected by infections of, of all types, not just, not just Lyme disease. Uh, we operate diagnostic laboratories, we provide extra advice to patients, to our colleagues, and, and, and occasionally to the government, not very frequently, uh, on, on how to manage and control infectious threats in, that affect the health, health of Canadians. Our members deal with issues ranging from assisting with emerging infections such as Ebola. Some of my members were in West Africa during, the, during this last major epidemic. Uh, managing chronic diseases from infections like hepatitis C and HIV and then also evaluating and introducing new diagnostic tests in our laboratories to ensure that the diagnoses our patients get for all infectious processes are the best ones based on best evidence. And we also introduce new, new treatments. Um, I have a colleague I refer patients to, actually use stool transplantation for C. difficile infection, and we're on that cutting edge of, of making people's lives better. I'd like to thank Health Canada and our uh, minister, uh, Jane Philpott, and Dr. Taylor for uh, organizing and funding this meeting. I think it, we think it's a very important meeting for you and for us to provide some common ground. Um, I guess from my perspective, what we need is science, what we need is science, what we need is science. Our members see this conference as a major opportunity for Health Canada to develop evidence and science-based framework to deal with this important health issue. And I wish you all the best for the conference. Thank you. Thanks,